Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at the Win.C Studio David Bowie. This is their third release, so they are a relatively new company. Now they have previously released two different versions of Freddie Mercury, but they came as outfit sets rather than fully boxed figures. So I guess this is also at the same time technically a first for the company. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind this is a third party unlicensed unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure. I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's super classy. An image of Bowie himself front and center, Win.C Studio top right, and his name down below. David Bowie on the side of the box, and then all of the various warnings printed on the back. On the inside, we do have another image of Bowie. I'm pretty sure that's the man himself rather than the figure. Plus, we do have a little card letting us know the saxophone is fragile. Please do not bend, press, or hit it hard. Don't worry, Win.C, I don't plan on doing any of that. Now, I did have to do a little bit of research into this particular outfit. I am a fan of David Bowie, otherwise I wouldn't have picked up this release. But I don't quite have an encyclopedic knowledge of all of his various outfits, because he did have quite a few over the years. Now, I personally really do like the choice here. More on that a little bit later on. He does of course have one clam tray and another down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, this thing is massive. It's of course a diorama style stage base. Now you do have two steps that lead up to the main platform, some details sculpted into each of them and up top lined in a very nice vibrant blue. You do have some sculpted in rough texture on the sides and these lights. Unfortunately, they don't actually light up, but you can remove them if you don't want them there. They can swivel left and right and move forward and back. You do get six of them in total, meaning you have some spare ones that you can use around the front or on each of the steps. But by far the coolest part about this display base for me is that it's modular, meaning if you don't want to have the steps there, you can completely remove them and save a ton of space in the collection. Now the display base is significantly smaller, but that's not all. If you don't want these side strut pieces there, you can remove them as well, meaning the display base isn't going to sit up anywhere near as high. Now you have a much more space conscious display base. You do get two different David Bowie head sculpts to choose from. One with an open mouth singing expression and the other that's a little bit more neutral. Now this one is my favorite. I think the likeness is strongest here. Does that mean it's perfect? No, I'd say it's around 95%. But at the end of the day, we all have our own opinions. So let me know what you think of this head sculpt down below. I do like that the eye color is accurate. One side brown and one side blue. The hair looks great with a ton of texture and so too does the skin, plus the paint applications over the top are on point. Now as for the singing one, this one could have been really good, but it kind of falls just a little flat for me. And I think it's down to the position of this eye. His right eye, the blue one, is just slightly off. So when you have his head tilted to the side so the brown one is facing you, the blue one is kind of doing its own thing, looking in a completely different direction. I understand what they were going for, and from certain angles, yeah, it can look good, like right there, but from others, it just throws me off. The likeness, though, is still definitely there on both sculpts. Once again, I turn the question over to you. 
Which one of these head sculpts do you prefer? One of the single most unique accessories is the saxophone. This is the first time I've ever seen a 1-6 scale saxophone. I would have loved for this to have been made out of diecast, but unfortunately it isn't. This is all plastic. There aren't any moving pieces, it's one sculpted hunk, but it's painted beautifully. It's done in vacuum metalized chrome and it's got a very nice shine to it. There aren't many surface imperfections at all, it's very clean. You do of course have the mouthpiece fully painted and you have this strap down below that of course is fully functional. Another very cool yet kind of essential accessory is the mic and the mic stand. Now you can remove the mic from the clip if you want Bowie to be holding it. The main rod section for the stand is made of metal. Even though it does have this piece in the middle, it's not adjustable, it's fixed at the one height. Then down below you have the stand portion which simply pegs in and it's a nice secure footing for it to just sit on the display base. Lastly, you do get a full array of hands and these aren't the usual cheap and nasty third party waxy glossy plastic hands, these are suitably high quality. You've got skin texture, you've got paint applications and the vein work fully sculpted in. Plus, as I said, you do get a full complement. What we are going to do now though is get Bowie himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And yeah, that is absolutely David Bowie. I love the way this guy looks all the way down to the choice of outfit which I alluded to earlier. Now I think they've chosen this look for a very specific reason. Their first release was Freddy. They made two different figures for Freddie Mercury, both in the Live Aid look and in his yellow jacket. Now this particular outfit was worn by David Bowie when he sang to commemorate Freddie Mercury. So as you can see, there's a bit of a crossover there. Either way, this figure is going to pop. The colour that they've chosen for the suit, the way it hugs the body, and even the nice vibrant tie. Now the body itself is relatively straightforward, it's literally a true type body. The head sculpt sits on it perfectly, and don't forget you do get two. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now in just a second we will be trying out the other head sculpt, but for now let's discuss this one. I think it fits perfectly, it sits at just the right height, the collar isn't too big and it doesn't ride too high. That's always one of the biggest complaints I have with 1-6 scale third party figures, is the collars tend to ride up way too high and make the figures look really goofy. This one doesn't have that issue. Everything looks to be in proportion. Now the green slash aqua colour they've used on the suit is stunning. This guy at the very least is going to stand out in the collection. You do have the little red ribbon that's permanently sewed into his lapel and a real working button if you decide you want the suit jacket to be done up. It is lined on the inside, underneath that he is wearing a white and blue striped shirt and then you have a tie which does look to be suitably accurate. When I was doing my research I made sure to check and yeah this tie does look to be spot on. Coming down to the pants they do of course match perfectly with the colour of the jacket and they are quite loose fitting so they should break at pretty much the right spot on the shoes. Underneath them, some white fabric socks, and then some black brogues. Now the detail around the edges is very sharp, but these are completely unpainted. I would have liked to have seen just a little bit of detail and highlights on the top to make them look a little bit more realistic, because as it stands they are quite plasticky. At the very least there is some subtle leather texture sculpted in. Underneath you do have some fully detailed treads. But as for the other singing head sculpt, and here we have it. Now once again, at certain angles this head sculpt works. I was hoping I would like it more once I pegged it onto the body, but I just don't. I still prefer the other one. That's a darn shame because this is the only singing head sculpt and Bowie is known for singing, so I would have loved to have used this one in the display. At the end of the day, I'm not super mad, I'm still glad we got two head sculpts, but the other one 
definitely takes the cake, at least for me. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Win.C Bowie alongside the Win.C Freddy Mercury figures. Now I can very clearly see an upwards trajectory here. Freddy was an outfit set with a head sculpt, it was BYO body. Whereas this time, Bowie is a full boxed release with a ton of accessories, a massive diorama display base, and a body. So yeah, I can't wait to see what this company is going to do next. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a fixed neck with a ball joint at the base. Looking forward and back, swivel and then pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there. They will go forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow that does get you past 90, plus a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and then pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee that does get you way past 90, and lastly a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the Win.C Studio David Bowie. Now going into this I was excited, but at the same time a little nervous. I've owned two other products from this company, but they were outfit sets. This is something else entirely. You don't have to go out and find your own body, it's a proper full boxed release with a display base and accessories. And I think he's all the better for it. This, in my mind, is now the ultimate David Bowie collectible. If you're a Bowie fan and you have vinyls and records and other memorabilia, this, I think, will be going front and centre in your display. He's that good. The body is a regular true type body, so nothing really to write home about, but the accessories, the outfit and the head sculpts are going to help him stand out in the collection. Plus that badass stage. And Win.C aren't finished with Bowie, they have other musicians in the works, and supposedly the stages are going to be able to connect to make one big platform. So yeah, I'm darn excited to see how that comes together. Now don't forget this is made by Win.C in an unofficial unlicensed capacity. I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. I've popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure. I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down in the description, why not hit that join button right next to the subscribe icon. If you do want to get your name featured in the end credits of every video, Justin's Collection Plus Max, the channel membership, is the way to get that done. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.